HPB is a German-based battery technology developer. With me is Liam Thielen, the head of business development. And welcome back to the New York Slash Exchange Great to, and, and to the U.S. Great to have you here. Now, before we dive in, I mean, start by telling us about HPB. What makes the technology unique that you yeah, do? Absolutely. First off, thank you very much. Um, like you said, back in the U.S., great to be here. Great to see you again, Jane. Um, so from our side of things, high-performance battery is um, a battery technology um, developer. Um, and what we've done is we've pioneered a new solid state battery technology that's there. Um, and that technology is safer, longer lasting, and more sustainable than existing lithium ion batteries that are out in the market. So we have uh, an extremely longer cycle rate that's in place. We have a lot more durability within our batteries. Um, but what really makes us um, unique is our business model and how we license our technology. So um, we spoke about it a little bit before. We don't actually produce the batteries. Um, we've developed the technology and then we enable our licensees to be able to take that out to the market. So. Okay. Um, and it seems like energy, battery, technology is changing yep. a, a lot. I mean, how would you describe the current environment? Yeah, so the current environment, it's it's taken quite a um, period of strategic realignment at the moment. We're seeing quite a lot of change from globalization um, into energy localization at the moment. We're seeing um, a lot of um, governments are looking to be able to protect their supply chains that are there. We're seeing uh, a lot of um, trade challenges that are coming out into the market at the moment. So um, it, it, this is really where this shift, actually, you would think that it would start creating diversion, but it started to be able to create um, a lot of partnerships. And we see that, especially with, with the US and Europe, of being able to work together to be able to see how they can protect those supply chains. And um, also one of the reasons why I'm, I'm here today to be able to, to talk a little bit more about that. Okay. And of course, We've got these tariff and trade issues going on. Yeah. Um, China has made some changes to exports of rare earth minerals, uh, kind of tightened yeah. uh, those. Does that impact your business? Um, actually, it's, a, it, it's quite an interesting one. It's a bit of a wake up call, everything that's happening at the moment. You can see that um, a lot of the key components are really intertwined. So whether it's the raw materials, whether it's the technology that's there, um, whether it's the supply chains that are that are actually taking place. So. You see as well, like um, the U.S., for instance, they rely heavily on um, certain supply chains that are in place, um, regions such as China, for instance. So this is um, this is really where um, that need to be able to work together, especially between Europe and the U.S., really starts to be able to kick in. From our side of things, this is where we're we're perfectly aligned to be able to provide our technology because. While it doesn't fix the overall global impact of the, the supply chains that's there, um, it helps to be able to localize those supply chains. As I mentioned, we don't produce the batteries, we license that technology. So that technology can be um, manufactured locally and it can help create jobs. It can help protect those supply chains that are there. So actually our business model fits perfectly into uh, into that area. Okay, how have you approached the challenge then of the supply chain issues and the tariffs and yeah, the, the access to the raw materials. Yeah, so so from our side of things, actually, um, it's really interesting. Our CEO and Dr. Sebastian Hines co-authored um, a white paper that was addressing um, critical raw materials and recycling. Um, and I think the key takeaway of that um, is actually the imbalance of um, the raw materials that are um, out in the market. but. How you can really address that is with smart engineering um, and being able to look at how you can approach it with smart engineering. And this is really where high performance battery came into that with our business model, um, with the long durability that we have in place, the exceptional cycle life that we have. It means that those batteries are lasting a lot longer. Um, and that has less of an impact then on the supply chain. So there's less of a reliance on external supply chains to be able to manage this. Yeah, okay. Now, what about things like the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, the EU's Net Zero Industry Act? How does that impact your business? Yeah, it's. I mean, it sends a really strong signal actually out into the market that regional and, and countries really want to be able to anchor that critical technology. They really want to be able to make sure that they're anchoring that domestically and in their markets. And again, this is where our business model fits perfectly to be able to do that. We're able to be able to provide that know-how, provide that, that that knowledge, but enable, so for instance, the US market to be able to 
leverage our technology and and drive that industry scale locally. Now, are you competing with manufacturers or working with them? Yep. Or how yep. how does it fit into the whole ecosystem? That's a really, really good question because um no, we're actually enabling them. So we're not competing with them. We're we're really being able to support the manufacturers locally. Um to be able to um, drive their technology forward. They don't need to be able to focus on R&D. Um, they can literally take our technology, our know-how, our R&D, and be able to drive that forward within their own marketplace. Okay. And then what about um, innovation? So, of course, that's key to what you do. Yeah. Are trade restrictions, government regulations, any of that impacting innovation? Um, actually, it you would think that it would, but it has the opposite effect. Um, actually, some of these constraints, they drive, ironically, they drive creativity. So you still have the same goals that are there, um, but you see firms or you see scientists, you see companies or individuals that are really trying to be able to get the same goal, but they're being much more creative in how they've been able to approach that. They're, they're finding new paths, new designs, new chemical um, inputs to be able to achieve the same goal. So this actually drives innovation. And this is really where high performance battery came from, of being able to find an alternative route to be able to improve that technology that's there. So um, uh, yeah, long answer short, um, bizarrely enough, it drives that creativity. Yeah, I mean, interesting how you've been able to kind of make the best out of that yeah. situation. Uh, I mentioned you're in Germany, you're here in the US. Um, what kind of opportunities are there for transatlantic collaboration? Yeah, um, huge, actually. We're seeing a lot um, of the relationships that are backwards and forwards. I mean, I've, we spoke before, I've been in the US um, four times already this year. And one of the reasons is that we're seeing um, that relationship being able to grow. I think if you look at the US and Europe, they see they, they share a lot of um, similarities in what they want to be able to achieve, a lot of similarities in terms of their goals. They want to be able to have industrial scale, they want to be able to have new technology that's there, and they want to be able to... Um, protect their supply chains as well. Yeah. Now, in terms of like your business model, which you explained, you license the technology. Yeah. How, what kind of reaction do you get from investors, from policymakers with that type of business model? Yeah. Um, really good. I have a really great reaction. Um, I think um, they see the logic behind it. They see the urgency for this type of model as well. We've seen Especially within the battery industry, we've seen a lot of um, startups that have been in the market that have been able to promise scale and not been able to to deliver. The industry doesn't want to be able to see startups that are that are breaking promises that are there. They want to be able to see a technology that is ready now, that's ready to go out to the market, that can solve today's problems, but also future protect the the supply chains and those 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 trade challenges that we have in place. And high performance battery fits perfectly into that. And what message would you have for policy makers or investors at this, part, at this point? Yeah, I think the, the, the battery conversation is changing um, and it has been changing over the, the last months and the last years. And it's, it's less about energy density or fast charging that's in place. It's more about transparency. It's more about deliverables and it's, and it's about independence as well. It's been able to bring value within local regions that's there. So I think that the key message from, from our side of things is really simple and really clear. That technology is there. It's ready. Our technology is ready to be able to scale. It's ready to be able to license. And we're in a position to be able to help the, the, the U.S. manufacturers to be able to drive forward and this new technology into the market. So I would say I would welcome, um, whether it's industrial players, whether it's financial or government, policymakers that are there um, to be able to join us um, in shape in the future. Yeah. Okay. Well, Liam, great to see you back in New York. We'll Thank catch you. you next time you're here. Thanks so. very much, Jim. Thank Pleasure. You. Uh -huh.